Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the farm. We have another beautiful May day ahead of us. And when we last left off, we were going to uh, get some lime and fertilizer on our um, silage field and our hay field over there. But I thought we'd go take a look and check on our animals, make sure that their food situation is looking good and see what's going on. So they are good for food. They still have some leftover uh, hay here. Oh, oh, oh. What we got here? We got us our first little pallet of wool farming. 112 liters of wool. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Let's go check on the old Piggly Wigglies. See how they're doing. So food-wise, 2,500 liters. That's good. We've got almost 9,000... Well, 9,700 liters of straw left and almost 8,100 liters of slurry, so things are looking good over here. All right, well, let's uh, go hop in our tractor and get to work. I did a tiny little bit of pre-setup. I got some bags on the old lift here and pulled this over, so we did have a little bit of lime left in it. We're going to fill it the rest of the way. And we're gonna get out on those fields and get them both limed and then we'll get them both fertilized and we'll go from there so i think what i'll do is just leave that dangling and we'll back up under it so i don't have to flip between two tractors <laughs> well we'll do it the, the easy way all right, let's get ourselves out in the field here. We'll go start with the uh, hay field first. It's probably going to take the most lime and the most fertilizer from the last time we did this. I kind of saw where the usage was was super high and mostly over in this area here. So let's uh, let's get to work and start getting this field prepped up. Okay, let's uh, let's jump out into a better view for you guys here, and we'll get her done. field already that went nice and quick step it on over here to the silage field but um, <clears throat> before we jump into the silage I was thinking about it we should take a look at our silage bales and see how they're performing they've got to be pretty close uh, we are at 88% nice oh, some of them are at 90% Beautiful. So definitely um, next month in June, we are going to have all of our silage ready to rock and roll. And that will be about <clears throat> 60,000 bucks that we should uh, be walking away with. So definitely enough that we could look at purchasing that field that we were talking about in the last episode. Um, and pleasantly, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, the application rate of the lime, 0 0.88 tons per hectare. Even the last field, our uh, now hay field, it was only, at, I think, 1.4, 1.5, something like that. So um, because the, the pH level of the field was not that bad, it's not used a lot. Oh, see, now we just jumped up to 1.75. Oof. Um, so the line was actually going further than expected. So this is good. Hopefully that trend will continue and uh, We can not have to go buy more bags of line. We've got I think four completely untouched bags still in the shed and we've got two brand new bags hanging Yeah the, uh, the other tractor there. so we're in good shape I think Said hopefully 
buy some more, but you do, you do. But uh, let's get back to an outside view here and let's get this field done. Pretty quick and painless, so uh, once we're done with getting the lime spread here, which is ow, <laughs> we'll try and get this little piece over here, but I don't think it's going to let us, if it even, oh, here it is. The only one downside to precision farming is, is if you miss a little tiny strip like that, it usually doesn't let you clean it up you have to have a certain amount that you're covering before it actually allows you to do the covering process so um, what we're gonna do here is put our lime spreader away and get our fertilizer spreader hooked on and we're gonna see what we have in here didn't want to stop the tractor let's see what we have in the fertilizer spreader and see if we need to uh, make a run the market and pick up some more fertilizer. Since we're doing two fields, I'm gonna say we probably need to because I remember right, this was down somewhere in like the 30% area that we left it. There wasn't a great deal in there, so. Oh, 53%, but still, definitely not enough to do both fields, I would say. Um, we'll, we'll go and try and do the hay field with what we've got here, because the hay field is the smaller of the two. If anything, I suspect we'll probably get through it. Okay. But we'll give it a go, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how this works out, and... If we have seed left over, or uh, fertilizer left over, then we'll move over to the other field and we'll get it looked after as well.
All right. Well, <clears throat> that certainly went a boatload faster than I expected. But just how far this fertilizer th uh, better could throw. Good lord. This thing's got a nice spread on it, so we managed to get both fields with the amount of fertilizer I thought we were only going to get one field and in record time to boot, so can't complain there. Let's get this uh, all unhooked here. And let's go uh, take a look and see what else we have on the table here. Let's get the tractor parked here. And we'll get the other one also put away. Don't like leaving the equipment scattered around, so I don't know where anything is. We'll drop off the bags of lime and uh, get this girl put back to bed here. Okay. Down a little. Yes, yeah, so we got lots of lime left, which is good because if we're going to be picking up that new field in the future, which I would really love to do, um, we're going to need some fertilizer and some lime and eventually some seed because I was thinking about it and I know it's currently a grass field, but I think we'll, we'll be converting it over. I don't know what crop we'll do yet, but get that sorted out when the time comes. Alright, let's get this one put away as well. Now, um, I know that when we looked up here the pigs had a couple thousand liters of food left, but I think we may make a run to the store and get them four more bags because the last thing I want them to do is uh, is start losing health, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get that taken care of for sure. We'll take a look at tomatoes here and see what we're at. We've got three pallets ready to rock and roll. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll only do our tomatoes when we've got four pallets because we can fit two stacks of two in here. I don't want to put any in the back of here again. That was just a disaster. <laughs> I mean, me working pallets is a disaster no matter where I'm stacking them, I guess, so it doesn't matter. Let's get this closed up, keep our seed and our lime safe and dry. Um, okay, I guess we'll go and get some pig food. I just want to take a look at the condition of the two fields. I should have done it while we were up here, but we're getting lots of steps today. Let's see what we've got up here. So we've got perfect pH, perfect nitrogen. Soybeans are growing. They're looking good here. Let's go look at the barley field over on this side. The barley is growing. We've got perfect pH, perfect nitrogen. So we're in good shape for both of our fields. This one, it says, needs plowing, though. So we're definitely going to have to uh, do some work to this field between crops so gonna have a fun a fun day there but let's jump into the into the tractor here with the front end loader on it we're gonna make our way over to the store and uh, pick ourselves up some more pig food all right here we are I think we're gonna go for four bags of pig food so we can get that thing load it up and uh, hopefully not have to come back next month. So let's go for more bags and drag them over there and uh, put them into the pig pen. Let's see if we can get lucky and grab all four at once. We do have the smaller tractor so I'm gonna say no. But it wouldn't be my channel if I didn't try. So, try. A 
have a feeling we're going to be doing the old lip stand. Down a bit, a little bit. Okay, all four bags. And up go back of the tractor. So, two it is. We'll just have to make two trips. But better safe than sorry. Come on, bag. Come to the back. There it goes. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to run these two bags up. We'll come back down and pick up the last two. And then we'll uh, get them dropped off for the pigs. So we'll bring you back when we're done with all that nonsense and while our pigs get their new snacks. Uh oh. Hmm. <laughs> he thinks we need to call for a tow truck. Thank goodness we're close to the store. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we were close to the store. We were able to send somebody out and Inch us back up onto our onto our wheels here. <laughs> I'm gonna get lots and lots and lots of flack for that one because I got lots of flack in the last video for how quickly I, I drive. I like the speed. I got the lead foot. And I knew I, I always forget when I'm leaving the store that that turn that I've got to take is so close to when we exit the store, and I keep thinking I'm just gonna drop the hammer and go the long way home and then I tried to make the turn and well you know a couple thousand pounds of uh, weight on the front that swings and physics takes over <laughs> oh well it's entertaining is it not gives everybody a chuckle makes me look like a fool works out in everybody's favor <laughs> all right well anyways let's uh let's get this food dropped off to the pigs and then i'll save you the return trip back to pick up the last two bags we'll bring you back when we've got everything at the house and we're ready to rock and roll and put it in for the pigs so let's get this first two dropped off and Make them happy and make me happy because we won't have to go for pig food next month, I don't think. Not with these four bags, anyway. Alright. Almost there. Let's see how this goes. If it caps off, then it would be nice that we have two spare bags we're not going to need to put in there, but I have a feeling it's not going to cap off. No, it didn't. Alright, well, you down, you to go. I'll bring you back when we're ready to rock and roll, folks. Alright, and here we are on our return trip. The last two bags of food. Hopefully this will max us out, but like I said, I think it'll probably hold 10,000 liters. I'm shocked if it held less than 10,000, so... Probably not going to be, but hey, that's not too bad. 6,300 liters of food. I think the pigs will be comfortable for probably at least half a year. But let's, uh, let's get this tractor put away. And... Let's take a look at that other field that we were thinking about picking up. I just, I can't remember the price of it. And I just want to take a look at a couple other fields. Just because we know that we've got a really big silage payday coming in. And we may actually be able to afford something a little bit bigger. So, not 100% not guaranteed, but let's just take a look and see what we've got. Because we were looking at this one here. And price is 52000 It's gone down. It's 1.8% below value. And we've got a discount. If we were to try and buy it, we would get a little bit of a discount on it because we did some work for that farmer. But I just want to look at some of the other prices and see 
I said I'd like to stay close to home, but we can find a good deal on a piece of land somewhere that we can save some money. Um, might be worth it. But I don't think I'm going to find anything less than 52. Holy smokes. Look at this thing, man. Like, $200,000. Crazy amount of money. Yeah. Looks like we're stuck with... Um going for this little plot here number 48 it would be nice to get number eight because then we could kind of get rid of the boundaries between get rid of the boundaries between our farm and this farm going everything up nice how much is it to buy these farms 267 and 38 might be worth looking at saving up some money and buying into those as well but all in good time all in good time. i think we're stuck with field 48 for fifty-two thousand. like i said we're going to have a big big payday from uh um our silage so we'll just keep that one in mind uh what else do we have on the go for today what can we possibly I don't think we've got much we can do around our own farm. Um, we might have to go take on a contract. Just to fill a little bit of time here and make a little bit more money. Ooh, we've got bailing. But unfortunately, everybody seems to want hay. This guy want hay? Oh, this guy's looking to make silage bales. Okay. Nice, nice. 7,000 bucks, field 20. It's got to be a big one. Where's field 20? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty decent size. Pretty damn decent. We got 12... 12 bales of straw off of, uh, or hay, off of field 38. Looking at the size comparison, this is probably going to be a 20 or 30 bale field. Pretty big. 21's close to the same size. Looking. But here's somebody who's trying to make, make hay. They want it tetted and then bailed, so that's going to take extra. We could use our fertilizer spreader, and we could do we could do a fertilizer contract or two. Uh, field nine, it's out really quick. only five thousand bucks. It should be fairly quick. Holy smokes, that's a giant field! You're only giving five grand for that? Come on super glue! Holy smokes! It should go fast, though. Our fertilizer spreader throws fertilizer like mad. Well, I think maybe, you know, an extra extra 5800 bucks doesn't hurt. Here's field 48. Oh, that's the one that we were just talking about. That's the one we're looking at. Oh, no, that's 38 in here, 48 on the first land. Uh, 48 is... 47. Come on, Mr. 48. Where are you hiding on me? Where are you hiding on me? Way up there. We might take both of those. Let's just start with the big one first. Make a little bit of money. And we'll see how long that takes to get done. So let's grab our big tractor. We'll hook up to our fertilizer spreader. And we're definitely, definitely going to need to buy some fertilizer this time. But that's okay get one bag. One bag should last quite a while in there. Because this thing throws like crazy, so we shouldn't have to do too many passes. It's hooked up. We'll 
pre-purchased down at the store so that it's there waiting for us. We don't have to hop out and go in the store. Oh, we're not quite close. There we go. Let's pick that bad boy up and let's buy some fur. Uh, we're probably going to get two. Just because that will leave us with some we can save in the hopper for when we're doing our next set of fertilizing for ourselves. Or if we take that second contract. Either way, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be good. So let's head on down to the store. Are you for real? <laughs> oh my lord, I run out of fuel like... Every bloody episode I run out of fuel. I really need to get that mod that beeps at you when you're running out of gas. Good lord, I do it every time. Well, let's uh let's hop in our little uh our little gator here. And we'll take a spin down to the store. Jerry can. Because that's one thing that we got to do when I was grabbing all the bags of lime and the bags of seed and we were bringing it back when I found out that all that stuff unloads into the trailer and doesn't sit in the trailer properly. Um, it got me so frustrated I forgot to buy the jerry cans that I said I was going to buy. So let's, uh, let's head to the store. We'll pick up a half dozen jerry cans so I've got some sitting around because as I said I run out of gas in every episode I make. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I figured that since uh, Field 9 was extremely close, i.e. right across the street from the store, that uh, I would bring you guys here for the refilling. We're going to have to go inside and get them to uh, come out with a forklift or something and pick this up because we don't have a way to put it in our own uh, put it in our own hopper here. Okay, hopper's all loaded up. Beautiful. Let's close the top on that bad boy. And let's get to work on this fertilizing job. Um, I think once we're done the fertilizing job we're going to take a quick look at um, I want to see the planting cycles because we have soybean and barley in our fields and I want to know when we're going to be pulling them out of the ground, what month, and um, what we have as options to put back in in that uh, time frame when we pull it out of the ground here. So we're going to dive in right here because there's no trees. We can drive through here. <laughs> Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll. Let's uh, get out into the field and get fertilizing. We'll switch views here and get her done. like this. I know that as soon as I collect on the contract it's going to just automatically pop it over to a finished state but I like to do stuff legit. Well, legit as I can. <laughs> but good lord look at this crappy like what kind of a farmer would be proud to call this his field when there's more stones in the field than there is crop like this dude better get his act together here, man. Like, this is a really, really big field in a nice section of town. It's, you know, it's really nice, and he's just dumping on it. Come on, treat your field better. Don't make me uh, buy it and take it off your hands. All right, well, we're going to run back to the house. 
we're gonna drop off our uh, fertilizer spreader and I don't know if we're gonna do that second job you know what yeah let's we'll take that second job first before we drop off the fertilizer spreader uh, that field is much smaller than the one that we just did we should be able to get it done really really quick so quick in fact we probably won't even need to uh, do a time lapse and speed it up it's just gonna be a hop skip and a jump maybe two or three passes so let's get down here we'll uh, collect the money for the contract we just finished and we'll head on over to the next one This is done. Okay, I've got field 48. Let's accept this one. Let's go get her done. Alright, well this field should, as I said, take maybe two or three passes at the most. We're going to get ourselves set up here and uh, get to work. So we'll do, we'll do this one entirely from in the cab because uh, I said it should be super quick no need to uh, do a time lapse on this one um, I would definitely love to hear uh, any of your guys' comments on any of the things in particular that I am doing or not doing that you would like to see or not see um, comments have been pretty quiet on this series so far. Um, and I do, like I said, uh, I definitely enjoy hearing from you guys. I definitely want to know what sort of things you're looking forward to. Um, I am considering uh, firing up some live streaming right away. I know I said I was going to try and do it on the weekend, but unfortunately I had a bunch of stuff come up on the weekend. I wasn't able to kick off a live stream, but I'm hoping that we can get something going this weekend, uh, probably on Saturday, and um, I'm thinking for that one I'm going to start with a little bit of farm sim. Uh, but I'm going to do a different series for live stream stuff, thinking that I might do uh, either a survival type thing, like a no man's land type thing, and start from scratch like we were doing a survival on our live streams before, when, uh, when I ended up taking a break for a little bit, and I really enjoyed that, so I was thinking about getting back into that one. The other option that I had was not much different, was still doing a survival type thing, but I was thinking about doing a survival with some vintage equipment. You know, maybe uh, 70s equipment or 80s equipment. I'm not going to go like super vintage, like we're not going back to the 1920s, because that equipment is really, really hard to do anything with on most of the maps because fields are just so big using like a one tooth plow on a 15 acre field is going to take three and a half days worth of <laughs> in real life time uh, trying to plow it and get it done right so we're going to try and use a little bit of common sense like if we were playing with equipment from the 70s or the 80s even up to the 90s like I hate calling the 90s vintage because, like, I was a teenager in the 90s. Kind of depresses me a little bit, but... <laughs> um, yeah, like, so if you guys have a preference um, between just a straight-up survival series with modern equipment or a survival series with vintage equipment, let me know your preference. And if you choose vintage let me know what decade you would like to see like i said i don't want to go anything older than the 70s because i want the equipment to be able to have the ability to work certain size fields and um, i want the equipment to also have the ability to uh, like we can do some some upgrades when we need to but I, like I said, if we're if we're doing vintage equipment in the '90s, for example, I'll only use stuff 
2000 and under, right? So the highest we could get up to would be a 99. Like we could start with equipment from the 1990s and get it right up to 1999 as a maximum kind of thing. So we'll use stuff from that decade uh, or earlier. Like we can do a 90s vintage survival and I could have equipment from the 80s, but just... You know, like if we were to start the, the series in 1990 exactly, we could have some equipment from the late 80s to start and uh, and go from there. Yeah, I'm sure you guys get the idea what I'm trying to get at. But definitely, if you're interested in uh, giving me a timeline that you would like to see, I would love to uh, love to do something like that. And if we don't do vintage, if we just do regular survival, I'm fine with that as well. So, you guys never got to see when I ran and did the pickup, but I did buy six jerry cans. We used one to get it going and uh, drove over to our, our diesel tank over there, which only had a couple hundred liters in it. So, we have also paid to fill that up, which is why we're, we're short on money. It cost me about $1,800 to, uh, to fill the tank. But... I'm going to put these over here for now, so that they're fuels by the fuel. Be nice if I could carry one of these guys around, uh, like on a tractor. Ooh, don't disappear into the ground. Need good money for you. Uh, yeah, it would be really nice if you could like strap one of these to a tractor and carry it around with you so that when you run out of fuel out in the field you don't have to run all the way back here to grab some fuel. But at least it's good knowing that I have some because I guarantee you in the next episode at some point we will run out of fuel in something that I drive. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so one last thing and then we're going to bring today's episode to a close. We still have lots of time in May, though, so we're good. 97%. It's almost silage selling time. I wanted to look at how much wool we have here. So we're at 144 liters. Just, I have never looked to even see what wool sells for. Wow. Wow. Like, we're looking at $2,700 for a thousand liters. Oh, that's going to make us tons of money. I think we're going to have to max out this, uh, this sheep barn um, with animals. I want to be making wool like crazy. That is phenomenal. How many can we hold? 45 more sheep. So I think we'll have to do it. We'll have to get, I think we'll get some of these, uh, these black browns and the black welsh guys maybe in the next episode when we sell our silage we'll put some of that money back into here but i think for now what the plan will be is uh when we sell our silage we'll buy this field 38 to give ourselves another field to work we'll add some more sheep into the mix so that we can be making more wool because that will help us make a boatload of money and get us uh some more fields in the in the end so uh, but yeah, I think that that is going to be it for today. One thing I want to look at, this slurry tank. How many liters does it hold? 8,200 liters. So right now, it would be full, and we'd have a little bit of slurry left in there. Okay. Uh, but yes, as I was saying, I think we're going to bring today's episode to a close. Um, definitely excited to move forward and uh, get our silage sold off, get some more sheep, buy another chunk of land. I think things are uh, progressing quite nicely for us here. So definitely excited for it. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode today. Um, I always enjoy bringing them to you. Trying to keep up the pace of one per day and we'll, we'll see how that goes. But definitely, like I said, get in the comments. Let me know if you want to see just a plain survival series with modern equipment or a survival series with vintage equipment. 
or you know give me thoughts if you don't want to see a survival series if you want to see something else something aside from role play because like i said you have to like do a lot of groundwork you ha gotta have a script all written out and while i do have enough for probably about an episode or two i don't want to put out an episode or two and then have to wait six months before i can do another one like i want to try and get enough material that we can do a good role play series when we decide to start one so um that being said don't pick that but if you don't want vintage survival and you want survival recommend something else to me that you'd like to see and try and make it happen uh, and that will be for live streams only that's the other reason i guess why we couldn't do a role play because role play is massive editing you can't do that in a live stream but just let me know your thoughts i'm interested in hearing what you guys think and how you feel about things so yeah with that all being said i'm gonna shut her down for today i hope you guys had a great time and uh, i hope we'll see you out on the next one take care everybody